What's up, family? Man, I want to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you guys today. Man, today we're going to talk about misfits and outcasts. Misfits and outcasts. See, you can't be a chosen one. You can't be a star seed. You can't be a child of God. You can't be an enlightened one. You can't have Christ consciousness, Buddha consciousness, God consciousness. You can't be or have any of these things and not be considered a misfit or an outcast. Stay with me. We're going somewhere. It's the truth because we talk about my life, you know. Um, I mean, you, those of you that watch my videos, man, you know the pain and the drama and the trauma that I've gone through. You know what I mean? And it's a trip because so many of us, uh, man, we catch hell. You know what I mean? And sometimes you only have to go through a whole lot. You know, people's like, man, I've never gone through that and that and that. that. Have you gone through so much? But it's not even about what I've gone through. For me, it is. But for you, it may not be. For you, I was a middle child too. You know, and there's a such thing called the middle child syndrome. You know what I mean? And it's in it's the oldest kid gets all the attention, gets all the love, gets all the gifts, gets all the pictures and all the other stuff, right? You know, the middle child comes along and then shortly after the middle child comes, another kid comes, you know? And so the baby gets all the attention now. The baby has been held and loved and what to do. And the middle child is often left to figure shit out on their own. The middle child is often left feeling like, what the fuck is going on? What about me? You know what I mean? Hold up. Wait a minute. I'm here too. You motherfuckers give Jonathan all the fucking attention or Sarah because you're the oldest. And now you just get me and you go straight to Betty Jane and Martha and whoever the fuck the little kid is. You know what I mean? And so often we sit here as the middle kid and we're like, what the fuck? What do I have to do to get some attention around this bitch? What the fuck do I have to do to get some fucking recognition in this bitch? I can't compete with my oldest brother or my oldest sister. I don't have the athleticism. I don't have the intelligence that they have. What about me? I'm human too. What about me? I have feelings too. And oftentimes, the middle kid is overlooked. And so they find their way just navigating through life, feeling unheard, feeling like they're invisible, like nobody gives a fuck about them. Misfits and outcasts. See, as a chosen one, you know what I mean? Man, we catch hell. As those of us that came here to be star seeds, or we were star seeds and came to this motherfucker, man, those of us, we're here on purpose. We're trying to do something positive and righteous for this planet. Man, we're going to catch hell. There's no getting around that shit. Misfits and outcasts. It's a trip because our whole life, we grew up and we're seeking attention. And a lot of times, the young ladies grow up and their fathers never have a son. And their daddy, all that he wants is a son to carry out his name. He wants a son to be athletic like him. He wants a son to play basketball, to play baseball, to run track, to do whatever the fuck it was that he did, to go fishing, to drive. He wants a son to carry out his legacy. Not knowing that it's his daughter that's going to take his name and his legacy to another level. And what he does is he overlooks his daughter because she's not a boy. He loves her, but he wanted a son. He cares about her, but she's not a son. She's not a boy. And no matter how much she tries to act like a boy, no matter how much she tries to show her daddy that, man, look at me, I'm good at basketball. Look at me, I'm good at volleyball. Look at me, I'm great at baseball. Look at me, I'm great at softball. Look at me, I'm great at track. It's not the same. And it's not the same, not because she's not great in her own right. It's not the same because her daddy is the one with the unresolved issues. And see, she's trying to be great. 
in his eyes. But he's fucked up. He's messed up. And so he's never going to see her greatness. He's never going to see her true potential. And so she's looking for love. She's looking to be valued. She's looking to be put up on a pedestal. And she's not going to get that. Not from him. And so in life, we grow up and we're looking for friends. We're looking for our peers. And man, we just want to fit in. We don't want to be a misfit. We don't want to be an outcast. Why? Because they get teased. They get bullied. Nobody cares about the misfits and the outcasts. Society shuns them. We don't even look at them. It's, we know they exist, but... Uh, if we could get rid of them and then have to see them, the world would be better. That's the society's mentality when it comes to outcasts and, and misfits. And we go running around trying to fit in, trying to fit in. I got into church, got into, I grew up in Christianity. I didn't want to, but man, I was indoctrinated into that bullshit. And so as a young adult, I'm running around trying to go to church, trying to fit in. But see, I'm a free thinker and I'm never gonna fit in into that bullshit. And I never felt like I fit in, even as a kid. I was always asking the difficult questions. I was always asking the wrong questions in Sunday school. And so they made me feel like I was the bad guy because I was asking the wrong questions questions and then you go to school you're not part of the elite you're not part of the, the clique because you're poor and you don't have the latest Nikes you don't have the, the 501 jeans what we were wearing when we kids you don't have the members only jackets you don't have the Kango hats. And so you shunned. The girls ain't really paying attention to you. Because you ain't got nothing to offer. Nothing of style. Nothing of fashion to offer them. And so you're sitting there, how do I fit in in this motherfucking world? And trip is, man, I grew up and I never studied. You know what I mean? Stay with me. I never studied in elementary. Shit just came easy to me. Very easy when it came to schoolwork, reading, math, all that. It was very easy for me. It wasn't for some of my other black peers. And so I'm in the top 3%, top three in my class. English, writing, math, all of that. I'm in the top three. And so the black kids are looking at me like, this motherfucker, he think he all that. Da, 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 da. But they wouldn't say shit to me because they knew I'd beat their ass. They wouldn't say shit to me sideways because they knew I would fight. They knew I had an anger issue. They knew, man, I had a short fuse. And so in recess and, and lunch, 
before school and after school. Man, I'm the captain. Me and another person. We're the captains of the team always. Because I was that good. But when it came to classwork, the black people like, ugh. When it came to sports and fighting and all that other, man, the white kids and the Asian kids, they were like, ugh. You know what I mean? He's too loud. He's too aggressive. He's angry. But when it came to math, when it came to work class stuff, they were like, okay, come on, Broadway, come on, Broadway. Everybody wants to be on my team. But they didn't like me when I wasn't in that situation. And so I'm looking for, man, where's my tribe at? Where's my family at? Where's my clan at? Because I never felt like I belonged anywhere. The black people wanted me when it came to fighting and sports. And that was it. The white kids and the Asian, they wanted me when it came to classwork. And that was it. So I felt like a nomad. Like I didn't belong. I didn't belong at home because I reminded everybody of my raggedy ass fucking convict father who had just murdered my mama and everybody's telling me I'm going to be just like him and end up in prison the rest of my life everybody said man you act just like your daddy always fighting angry you got the devil in you and all this other bullshit that we're spewing so I wasn't accepted at home I wasn't accepted at church. I couldn't sing worth the shit. So they kicked me out of the fucking sunshine band. They made me a fucking usher. Misfits and outcasts. I didn't fit in in school. And it came to feel like Damn, I don't fit in anywhere. People like me, but I believe people are more afraid of me. People thought I was cool when I was with them by themselves. But when they were with their friends, like, uh, Broadway's different. That motherfucker's special. He's not like us. Misfits and outcasts. And the crazy thing is, we didn't come here to be accepted and embraced and to become part of that fucking tribe. We didn't come here. As far as chosen with star seeds, children of God. We didn't come to this motherfucker to be accepted by the fucking religious fanatics. We didn't come here to be accepted by the fucking political. We didn't come here to be accepted by these fucking hood rats. We came here to be set apart. We came here to be different. But see, as a kid, being different hurts. Being different says there's something wrong with you. Being different says, you're not like us, so we can't fuck with you. You're not like us, so we don't like you. You're not like us. 
so we don't love you as much as we love your older sister and your younger brother. We're not going to spend as much time with you. We don't think as highly of you. And that hurts. That crushes our spirit as little kids. And the trip is, we came here just for all of these people. We came here to be this light in this dark world. See, you can't be the light in a dark world if you're just like the fucking darkness. How the fuck are you going to light the way if you fit in with everybody else? How are you going to show them the way out of the darkness? How are you going to show them the way out of their pain and their suffering and their trauma if you're just like them? How are you going to stand out? You see, we've been taught not to stand out. We've been programmed to fit in. We've been programmed to be just like everybody else. And that was one of my struggles in the military. Because you know, they want conformity. They want everybody to be the same, to look the same. To march the same. And that's great when you're in uniform formation like that. But I'm not like everybody else. You're not like everybody else. And so we struggle with, man, where do I fit in in this fucking fucked up planet? I got these fucked up Christians with all their bullshit and their dogma mad as hell because I curse. And because I got tattoos. And I got all these fucking political people mad as hell because I won't push a fucking black agenda. I won't push division and hatred. I won't push the separ separation bullshit. Where do we fit in? How do we feel loved, feel valued, feel important in a society that don't give a fuck about us? In a society that's always trying to change us? And this is the problem that I have with so many Christians. They're always trying to change motherfuckers instead of just being a beacon of hope and a beacon of light. They're always trying to tell somebody what they're doing is wrong. It's a sin. You're going to hell. No, I'm not. Shut the fuck up. And so we're made to feel unwanted, unloved. We're made to feel like nobody values you. Nobody's ever going to be in love with you. Nobody's ever going to want to commit to you. Because that's the story of our life. That's been the story of our life. And so we do so much to be accepted, to be seen by the masses. Their affirmation of us makes us feel good about us. 
them subscribing, them liking us, liking what we say, liking what, that makes us feel so good about who we are. But that's not why we came here. We came here to be like Jesus Christ. And what I'm saying, Jesus Christ had issues with the religious folk. Or the religious folks had issue with Jesus. Jesus went into the temple and tore the bitch up. See, Christians don't want to talk about that Jesus. Christians don't want to talk about the Jesus that made a fucking leather whip and went into the temple and start tearing up the tables and throwing their money around and chasing motherfuckers out of the temple. See, Christianity totally glosses over that part of Jesus. Christianity totally dismisses that aspect of Jesus. Oh, that's violent. They missed that part. Jesus didn't give a fuck what the religious folk thought about him. At all. He didn't give a fuck what the other people thought about him. He came here. He did what he was supposed to do. He didn't ask nobody's fucking opinion. He didn't give a damn what they had to say. He broke all the fucking rules. And he didn't give a damn about the fucking rules. He came here to let his light shine. He came here to stand out. He came here to be different. That's what we came to do. Come on, mistress and outcasts. We came here to be different. But what most of us do, we become different. In a negative way. We become different. In a destructive way. Because we've been hurt. Because we've been rejected. We've stopped allowing our light to shine. Have you stopped letting your light shine? Man, my hope and prayer is that I said something to encourage you, to inspire you, to challenge you. I love you guys. Happy human. Peace.